Hey everybody, I'm doing things a little different this week because I want to um, show, let me make sure I'm there, there I am. Um, I'm going out of town tomorrow and I'm gonna be in Mexico. So I wanted to make sure that I had the, the lecture up just in case that I'm not uh, near Wi-Fi tomorrow. So for this week, we're just gonna do it this way and you can watch the video through the link, which you're watching it, so you got it. And um, we'll do it this way this week and then next week we'll be back on and we can have a little more discussion together. Unfortunately, um, this week I'm not gonna be able to do the um, in-person video. But um, I really enjoyed the conversation that we had and getting to see everyone's textiles. And um, it's so great to see all the beautiful textiles that people have made getting some really interesting work in that I'm posting on the website. So if you get a chance to look at the student work, um, there's a lot of new pieces up. And I even have one student who's making, dyeing her own dye. She created dye out of the marigold and she has uh, dyed her own yarn and she's trying different, different types of dyes now. So that's really exciting. And I'm really grateful when you send me any sort of email or message that lets me know that you you know, got something from the class or you enjoyed one of the artists or um, you were inspired to do something because of one of the classes. So if you don't draw or paint, that's okay. You can always just send me a little email and let me know um, how the class is going for you. Or you can send me your thoughts on the artist too. So this, uh, today's class is about Jose Guadalupe Posada and June Leaf. These are two very different artists. The first one is Jose Guadalupe Posada. You, I'm sure you might have seen his um, Katrina. La Katrina is the skeleton woman with the big hat on. And he uh, that image is everywhere for Dia de los Muertos. And um, you may have seen it printed on a lot of things. It's a very reprinted image. So that's his most famous image that he is known for. And June Leaf is a living artist today who um, shows a lot of work in New York City, but all over the world. And um, she works a lot with skeletons as well. So my first thought for this was skeletons, and that was the theme and ways to create work with this sort of narrative that they're both using. But as I learned more, I realized that they're both using narrative in their work in a powerful way. So um, I'll go over that more. Um, but what I mean by that is that Jose Guadalupe Posada created political cartoons that were really wild for the time. And they, you know, they brought people, they made people angry, they made people happy, they made people think, they taught people about what was going on with the political environment. And June Leaf does a completely different thing, even though they're both working in skeletons in a lot of ways. She makes work that's very personal. It's about her family, it's about her childhood, and it's about her marriage and her love. So two different ways to use narrative in your work, and you'll be able to see how powerful they both are. Um, and they're both using skeletons. So Jose Guadalupe Posada was born on February 2nd, 1852 in Aguas Calientes, Mexico. Um, his brother was a teacher, so he taught him to read and write at a very young age, and he was able to get a job in a printmaking shop because he knew how to read and write, and that's where he learned uh, lithography and engraving. Now, I don't know if anyone knows anything about printmaking here, but I love printmaking, and I also studied printmaking in Guanajuato, Mexico. Uh, which is where I learned lithography as well. But there's a lot of different types of printmaking, um, woodcut print, linoleum prints, mono prints, engravings, etchings, lithography, um, aqua tint. There's a whole bunch of different ways to make a print. Um, but lithography is one of the most prized ways of making a print. And today it's very hard to do lithography because you have to have a certain type of large limestone that is very hard to find because they've broken, um, and once it's a broken slab, you can't use it again or else it'll make a big crack in your print. So there, there's less and less lithography every day because of these stones are very hard to get a hold of and they're very expensive. 
I don't know anything about engraving, um, but I do know that he made a lot of wood cut prints too and linoleum cut prints. So he began his job as a political cartoonist um, after he learned the engraving and the lithography and he was making political cartoons for a paper called The Bumblebee. And uh, he got in a lot of trouble for that. People didn't, the, not the people liked it, but the local politician in town did not like what he was making. He was very offended by the work and therefore the Bumblebee newspaper was shut down. So he moved to Leon, Guanajuato, which um, is a beautiful city. If you've never been there, I recommend everyone go. I used to live in Guanajuato, Guanajuato. Um, and he opened a print shop. Print making is a huge, big part of Mexico's art world. And um, if you ever want to learn printmaking, one great way to do it is to go take a class in Mexico. They have tons of classes on different types of printmaking there, and they do such a great job. You could do it in Oaxaca, and Guanajuato, anywhere. Um, there's printmaking shops where they teach classes, and you can do it in the States too. You can actually do it at the Athenaeum, if anybody is interested. The Athenaeum in um, North Park in San Diego, they teach classes on printmaking, and they have weekend classes, they have long-term classes, semester classes, um, book making classes, paper making classes. So the Athenaeum, which is in North Park, has a lot of printmaking classes if this inspires anybody to do printmaking. Uh, so he moved to Leon and he opened a printmaking shop there, which was pretty successful. He did it, um, he made prints that were still political, he made advertisements, book illustrations, posters, and all kinds of other things, anything that people would hire him to print. And during this time, he was still um, working for a long time doing commissions. And then that's when he moved to Mexico City and he started, a lot of his drawings are commissions that people, stories that people wanted him to tell through his style. So they would hire him to make a painting of, you know, people protesting or people on bicycles or people at a wedding, things like that. So that's what he was known for. Um, so we're talking, um, 1852 here, so the 18, 1900s. And then we have June Leaf, who was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1929. Um, she's always been a creative sort of person. She was a dancer as a child, and she knew she would be an artist at a very young age. She just always knew that it would be a part of her life. What I think is really interesting about June Leaf is that she doesn't just um, paint. She also sculpts. She does all these wire sculptures and she invents things. So she, if you read any of the articles, she invents different kinds of glasses. Uh, so glasses you put on, you can only see the peripheral or um, she makes little inventions that are these creative little sculptures that she, they're art, they are fine art, but they're also very much inventions. And she calls herself an inventor. So she, um, she knew she'd be an artist at a very young age. She went to the Institute of Design in Chicago when she was 18 and she was very, um, she was the youngest person in the school and she decided she ended up didn't want to go to grad school or to, um, to, to art school. She wanted to be like the artists who were visiting, who were already, you know, succeeding as artists and coming in to do the lectures and things like that. So she decided to leave the school after a very short time and just pursue her art career. Um, what she did, and she ended up marrying a uh, photographer, Robert Frank. Um, you may know his work. He makes documentaries and photographs. Um, so then she went back and she ended up teaching in Chicago and she sort of shaped a lot of her art scene there. She met Leon Golub and she met some other important artists during that time when she was teaching and she won a Fulbright. And now I'm seeing a theme here. Sheila Hicks won a Fulbright, Graham Nixon won a Fulbright, um, June Leaf won a Fulbright. Uh, so many of the artists that I have, um, written about and, and talked about here have won a Fulbright. So I think Kyle Staver won a Fulbright too. And Don Clements also won a Fulbright. These are all women too, except for Graham Nixon. Um, and I'm not sure that he won a Fulbright, but um, long story short, if you want to make it as an artist, 
win a Fulbright. Pretty easy, right? Anyway, so um, she won a Fulbright in 1958, and she went to Paris, which is also what Sheila Hicks did. And she uh, started drawing in the Louvre from the masters and learning as much as she could about drawing and painting. And um, now after, after that, she's now lives in New York City half time. And she also shares that time with her husband in Nova Scotia. So they split their time between New York and Nova Scotia. And they live um, what seems to be just a wonderful life filled with art and documentaries and making work and enjoying life together in places. And her work is very sentimental. You'll see how it's, oops, it's very intense. Um, I don't know, I think um, it's very painterly, it's very loose. Um, oh, sorry. It's very uh, unique. And she's represented by Edward Thorpe Gallery. And uh, in 2016, she had a retrospective at the Whitney. So let's take a look at some of the work. So on the left here, we have June Leaf. This is one of her sculptures. She does a lot of welding and creating um, different figures, repeating figures. And the skeleton is one of her repeating figures. And over here on the right, we have um, La Catrina. This is the most famous piece by Jose Guadalupe Posada that you might ever see. Whenever you see this, and there's a lot of his work that's similar looking, and then you'll always know, oh, that's Posada. People just call him Posada. Um, and down here, we have one of his um, uh, drawings, I, I believe. And this is, you know, death coming to take this man away, and the people are screaming about it. So you can see just how intense these drawings are. And June Leaf sculpture here, which is quiet, it's sitting there, but it has a lot of power to it. It has a lot of intensity to it. Um, here's some more. A couple more uh, prints on the right here by Jose Guadalupe Posada. We have on the top, the, there's the all of the heads of the skulls here. I'm not sure quite what's happening, but here's a little rat skull or something coming and picking up all of the other skulls and the people are running away. I don't know the exact political context of this, but this I'm sure represents some political character. And this one probably does too. It looks like the people are losing here and the, this guy is sort of heading everything else. And then we have another one of June Leaf's figures, just so you can see how she works with color and paint and um, this one's not necessarily a skull, but you get to see some of her different work and the way these figures are sort of standing in the space. And um, June Leaf often leaves a single figure standing. And Jose Guadalupe Posada always has a full composition with a lot of things going on, a lot of stories being told. But there's stories being told in both of these. I don't know what the story is of this painting on the left. I could only surmise. Um, here's a couple more. This is one of my favorite pieces by June Leaf uh, with the figure and then the skeleton lying in bed together or lying on a blanket together. I had this piece hanging in my studio for a long time, a picture of it, not the original. Um, and I just think this is such a beautiful, intimate, raw painting. Um, I know that she's allergic to oil paint, so she uses acrylic paint. Um, and she, she, what she does is she rubs chalk or paint onto the painting, onto the paper until she finds the image. And she says the image comes to her. So she sort of just plays with paint and pushes it around until something comes to her and tells her what it is. And over here on the right, we have, um, another political cartoon with uh, the head of a character on a, a goose or something and talking to this woman. Again, I don't know the whole history of this, um, this work, but I do, you can really see the, the skill that he has, the drawing skill that he has and the ability that he has to create these characters and these interesting narratives um, within the piece. So this one, you know, it's just two couple, a couple here, but I don't quite know what's happening in this piece. So if you don't want to do the assignment, which is drawing, um, 
drawing a, a narrative with a skeleton, one thing you could do is look up one of these Jose Guadalupe Posada cartoons and political cartoons and find the exact story to it and, and tell it, tell us what it is. Again, here's another painting of a June leaf painting and there's a skull sitting here on the table. And then it looks like there's a little figure in the back here, but she's very loose, very painterly. She uses a lot of earth tones in her work. Um, you know, I feel like these are very soulful paintings. These paintings almost feel like she doesn't really control them at all. The paintings, like, like she said, the image comes out of the painting as, she, as she's painting. So they're loose and um, she's sort of using her intuitive process to create the work. Uh, again, here we have Posada on the right and it's a cowboy, maybe a Zapatista or a sort of revolutionary cowboy riding on a horse here. And again, there's all of these skulls on the ground. So this must have something to do with something that was happening at the time. And he's carrying sort of a pirate flag here. Um, sort of a pillage and plunder image. So even though, you know, these are very different images and we're comparing them and contrasting them, they both have a theme in that they're both telling a story and they're both using skeletons in a completely different way. Here's a couple, oh, I already put this one in, the first one, but here's a couple more of her drawings. I find them really interesting and just beautiful to look at. I, I really like to enjoy how loose they are, how she keeps the gesture and the movement alive in these pieces. And uh, speaking of movement, movement, you almost feel like he is sort of pulling these fingers and these hands apart. Um, and then over here, you can see the figures, skeleton figures dancing and having a good time at a party and drinking and playing music. So that's just a fun little representation of some of his work and but this skeleton right here I think it's simple and powerful um, and very beautiful uh, okay here's a few more of her sculptures the stairway here is pretty wild it goes to nowhere they're smaller than you think they are they're really you know they're tiny little sculptures um, they all fit on well most of them are tiny but uh, a lot of them are you know about 10 inches and um, she's not afraid to use repeating figures and repeating themes so this table piece is very similar you know it's almost the same table here as this one same table different skull different and only one is a one is a sculpture and one is a painting but she's using repeating storylines within her work and she's using um, sculpture and painting, welding, string, whatever she can find in her studio to make her work. And over here we have another political cartoon. Looks like some sort of court system or church thing going on and they're holding up papers. I don't know what that's about, but um, it would be interesting if someone found out the exact story of some of these pieces and came back and let the class know. Um, here's just a few more. Uh, I thought these were interesting because of the movement that they all show, specifically this character here who's sort of pushing this round, rotating cog around. And then we have this horse. And uh, even the horse in this case is a skeleton. So you can, this down here, I believe, is a close up of this piece. But she did make a lot of them, so they could be different. La calavera, that just means the skeleton. Um, but he has the horns. So they're pretty eerie. Both of them have sort of an eerie sense to them. And um, what I like about June Leaf's work is a lot of people, when they make skeleton work, it, it sort of goes into the category of, oh, Dia de, lo, Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. And, oh, this is, you know, Mexican... Um, folk art and it's not taken seriously as fine art. So one thing I think June Leaf does really well is she honors the fine art aspect of her work. And that's it. So 
uh, just to go back and review a little bit here. Here are these images one more time for you to see. And we have the video will be posted up on the YouTube channel as well as um, embedded into each weekly lesson. I have embedded the video for that class at the bottom of each lesson. So if you missed one, you just go to the weekly topic and you can see all of the videos and the articles. And then at the very bottom is my video with my PowerPoint. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture on Jose Guadalupe Posada. And next time you see this image right here, La Catrina, you will know that Posada made that piece. And maybe someday you'll see a June Leaf painting somewhere. They're all over. I think the Broad has some in their collection. The Getty might have some. Um, and you'll be able to recognize these artists when you're out and seeing some of these shows. So thank you so much for participating and being in the class. And I'd love to hear from you. If you make a, um, you can make a narrative with a skeleton, um, a personal narrative or a political cartoon. And uh, if you don't want to do that, you can look up Jose Guadalupe Posada's political cartoons and see if you can find the story behind one of them. And that would be a really interesting way to do it, too. Thank you very much. See you next week on Thursday at 1 p.m. Bye.